What's up, bitches? This is Shoke, and guess what I got? Yeah, that's right. Pandora's motherfucking tower. And you guys don't have this game, so you mad right now. Like, unless you live in the UK, because it's only out in the UK and Japan, but I have recently downloaded the Dolphin emulator, and I am running this game in 720p right now. I can run it in uh, 1080p. But um, it was easier for um, you know, it was easier on the frame rate and on uh, fraps. You know, if I did the video in 720p, and you know, I was gonna upload the video in 720p anyways. So you know, 1080 playing in 1080p would pretty much been useless, you know, for recording purposes. Um, this video was extremely long. Like I recorded a lot of footage, so um, a lot of this is uh, you know, going to be edited, and I did a lot of you know, like fooling around and stuff because um <laughs> a lot of parts you know i didn't know what to do or whatever well i didn't necessarily not know what to do but you know i was just kind of like failing or whatnot and um i'm actually you know I'm, i know a lot of you are like wondering um you know how exactly i'm playing this game i actually played this game using the mouse and keyboard and it actually worked pretty fine and uh yeah you can actually do that on the dolphin emulator you don't need to get a Wii remote actually you don't need a Wii remote or a nunchuck uh, so yeah, I just kind of you know assigned the buttons to certain keys and whatnot, and of course you could also use the mouse. And as you can see, um, I'm using the IR pointer, and of course you could replace the IR pointer with the movement of the mouse. So you no, know, it's pretty much you can pretty much get a very you know similar experience. So uh, yeah, the reason why you know he kind of turns so sharply and whatnot is because I'm using you know the WASD um, keys. But of course, you can hook up a Wii Remote and Nunchuck to your PC. All you have to do is um, get a Bluetooth adapter, which I'm pretty sure you could just buy for $20. Honestly, don't know if I'm going to buy one because, as you can see, I'm doing pretty fine with the keyboard and mouse. Now you see me miss, you know, a couple of enemies every now and then, like right there. But you know, I, I was just, you know, kind of getting used to the controls and whatnot. And this is pretty much my first time playing this game. But uh, like I said, yeah, a lot of this is going to be edited because I recorded a lot of footage and I tried to get what, you know, what was essentially the first level of this game all the way up to the first boss. So it's going to be, you know, some cuts here and there. Uh, basically, the story about this game is um, this chick, she was like a princess or whatever at this um, village or whatnot. She got cursed. Um, I, I skipped the opening cinematic because <laughs> I was just too excited to play the game. But basically, this chick, um, this guy's friend, she's cursed or whatever. And you have to go and get this meat. You got to go into these towers and defeat these enemies for their meat. And when she eats this meat, it kind of, um, you know, kind of keeps the curse at bay or whatever because she starts turning into a beast or whatever. And so you have to go to these towers, carve, you know, this meat out of all these uh, monsters or whatever, and go back and feed it to her, like just raw. And it's kind of like a really gritty concept in a really gritty game. But you know, uh, that's Nintendo for you, man. You know, they're they're only for kids. <laughs> they're only for kids. <laughs> and yeah, and, um, she like throws up or whatever. Sometimes she eats it. Like it's it's pretty, you know, it's pretty grim and you know pretty nasty and there's this um really weird looking old lady i had footage i had footage of you know the story or whatever but like i said i just uh, kind of uh, cut out this video because i'm pretty sure you guys are more interested in um you know seeing the actual game you know the actual gameplay um speaking of which it kind of feels like a mixture between castlevania and zelda with a little bit of god of war and I'm pretty sure by, you know, just watching this, you can pretty much see exactly what I'm talking about. It kind of feels like that. And, um, also, I, I recorded footage of it, but you could upgrade your swords, you know, weapons or whatever. It's, you know, it's an RPG, you know, um, essentially. There's, you don't see any, you know, numbers when you hit the enemy. But, yeah, you know, there's a R it's pretty much an RPG. You can upgrade your weapons, armor, whatever, and, um, you can equip stuff, of course. And, um... I said I didn't get footage of it, but there's like, uh, it's pretty cool. There's like a lot you can do, and you have to gather materials, you know, upgrade your weapons. So it's, it's a really, you know, interesting mix. So like I said, you know, it's Zelda, God of War, and Castlevania. Then it has this like RPG, you know, element kind of thing going to it. 
but um as you can see I keep on like doing the same combo over and over again but you can actually you know you know get other combos in the game as well you know upgrade your combos you know things of that nature so for the duration you know of this gameplay I'm pretty much gonna be doing the same hack and slash combo and of course that's just because it's uh you know the first level and um that chain thing you guys are seeing is exactly that it's pretty much a chain that you can use to uh, grab objects You're, you guys are about to see it right here and you can do this thing where you basically like scope in the faraway areas you can see right there and then you uh, get closer and then you can like grab items just like that it's pretty cool and of course as you guys have already seen you can use it in combat as well and I saw in um, footage of the game that you can also do things like grab enemies with your chain and like slam them into other enemies. But I guess, you know, that's an ability that you get, you know, later into the game. So I was trying to see if I could do it right now, but no, I couldn't. Oh, no. Speaking of which, I know a lot of you are curious about um, how the motion controls work. You can actually, you can actually, um, whatchamacallit, assign motion controls to certain keys like swinging the weird mode upwards I have that assigned to R swinging it downwards I have it assigned to F you see what I'm saying uh, swinging it left and right I have that assigned to T and G so you know, uh, you know not having a weird mode is actually not that big of a problem well at least not in a game like this you know maybe in a motion control heavy game like uh, Red Steel 2 Red Steel 2 I wonder how that will play on a PC a keyboard and mouse that will be pretty awesome I'm gonna try that out but yeah, um, you know, the controls look pretty fine. I'm going to skip right here. Because I was just in that room for like 10 minutes. Yeah, when I first got in here, I was like, are, are you serious? You know, I'm this badass running around with a sword, killing all these monsters. You mean to tell me some fucking rose bushes <laughs> are like in my way and getting this door? Like, just crazy. I can see I try to, you know, uh, chop them up. And stuff like that. When after you play Skyward Sword, you start doing the, those kind of things in other games. Because no other one of the cool things about Skyward Sword is, you know, if you, if something makes sense in Skyward Sword, you could actually do it. You see what I'm saying? So if this game was Skyward Sword right now, you would actually just be able to just cut those out the way and then just get to the door. And that was one of the cool things I like about Skyward Sword. But off topic here. No, um, as you can see, there's a little. It's not exactly a puzzle. But, you know, you'll be presented with problems that you have to, you know, uh, go and, you know, fix or whatever. To, you know, there'll be things that stunt your progression and whatnot. Um, and, and, of course, you know, there's, uh, you know, like these, you know, the documents, you know, and whatever. Little books that tell you, uh, you know, mechanics about the game or, you know, the certain weapons you have and things of that nature. And as you're about to see right here, I could uh, use the whip to um, climb on this ledge right here to latch onto it and then climb up this game is pretty damn good guys um based off what i played so far of course i've only played the first level but i'm basing my score off the first level i'd give this game like a i give it like a 8.3 out of 10 you know it's not exactly amazing but at the same time you know it's pretty damn good it's a pretty solid game so i'd give it like a 8.3 out of 10 so far now, it could go down from there it could go up from there who knows but that's the score I'd give it right now. And see, uh, can't get through the door. Or whatever. <coughs> oh, and uh, speaking of which, you guys see at the bottom right, that's basically, uh, you know, your inventory for usable items. There's potions in this game, as is, you know, as in, you know, mul you know pretty much every RPG out there in existence. And, um... If I'll go ahead and get this out the way, I actually stopped to read this. <laughs> Most of the stuff I was just skipping through. Because I was just, you know, trying to hurry up the footage for you guys. But, um, if you look at the bottom left, after I get this off the screen. See, that circle thing is basically, uh, the meter for the chick, his friend. And basically, if you don't get, um, uh, through the dungeon in time, she'll turn into a, um, she'll turn to the beast or whatever. And I'm pretty sure it'll be, um game over or something like that at least that's what I've read I'm not speaking from experience because that hasn't happened to me yet but when that meter gets full something happens I'm pretty sure like she dies or something like that or she turns to the beast or whatever so you kind of fill the dungeon or whatever and um of course the little red line right there is my health and the bar under that that is the chain and basically when you latch onto enemies um I didn't know this at this time in this footage 
but when you latch onto enemies you could pull back on it and like charge it up to where it'll do more and more damage over time and then rip it out of them and it'll do like a huge chunk of damage you know so that's basically uh what that does so yeah this game is uh pretty good if you if you look closely up at the uh, top left corner i have a frames per second thing up there and that's uh the dolphin emulators uh frames per second uh counter and I had that on there uh, just to see, you know, how well the games are running. And I could run this game in 60 frames per second. The thing is, I don't know how. Well, actually, no, I do know how. The thing is, I, I ran this game in 60 frames per second. But when I did that, the game, at the same time, ran twice as fast as it should be. At the bottom of the screen, it was saying that the game was running at, like, 200% or more. So I got to kind of figure out how to... um you know adjust the settings to fix that if I can I'm pretty sure there should be some way I'm thinking maybe if a game natively you know runs in 30 frames per second you have to run it in 30 frames per second I'm that's what I'm guessing but uh, yeah I did run it in 60 frames actually I ran it you know more than 60 frames but you know that made um, you know my PC actually run the game at like 600% speed so the audio was off all the characters are moving fast and whatever and right now um, as you see, um, they told me I can, you know, chain two things together. As you can see right there, that's pretty badass. That's a pretty cool mechanic. So, yeah, guys, um, if you have a dolphin emulator, like, it is, <laughs> like, you have nothing to lose. And, um, from my understanding, I've, I've already tried this. Um, most, most DVD drives cannot play retail, um, Wii games. I tried popping in a couple of my retail Wii games and of course my, my computer couldn't read them but I went online and people said that some more you know modern or recent um, you know DVD drives can actually go ahead and you know read the Wii uh, the Wii retail disc for you know the Dolphin emulator so it pretty much just depends on which uh, you know uh, DVD drive you have but if you don't have a DVD drive that can actually read the Wii games for uh, the Dolphin emulator what you can do is pretty much, you know, just dump the game onto your computer. You know, just rip off the disc, get the iOS, um, excuse me, ISO file, you know, onto your computer, and you can run it from there. Um, I know a lot of you who may not be into PC gaming or PCs or whatever, you know, this kind of stuff. You might think this is all hard to pull off, whatever. No, this is act. This was actually like really simple to do, and as you can see right there. You can actually use the chain to uh, dismember certain parts and enemies. That's pretty cool. And right here, I'm just going to go ahead and skip ahead to the boss fight, you know, for the sake of time. But yeah, it's actually really simple. Just download the Dolphin emulator. You extract the files. You know, open up the emulator, and then you go to File Open. Click on the iOS file. I keep on saying iOS <laughs> ISO file, and that is like literally pretty much it um, depending on how powerful your PC is of course you're gonna have to flip around with some of the settings but you know other than you know messing around with the settings or whatever it is pretty damn simple to do um, and speaking of which you, a lot of you probably think that it you know what you need a high-end PC to run a emulator you know not really um from what I've seen all you need is like a dual core with at least two gigs of RAM you could pretty much um you know run this emulator although of course it would be ideal if you have you know a, a somewhat beefy um cpu and at least four gigs of ram you know and right here um i don't know what the hell happened i was like trying to get his attention trying to initiate the boss fight and i, I skip ahead right here to where i finally get his attention whatever i don't know what that was about but yeah as you can see i uh, started the boss fight and I was kind of doing the wrong thing here the whole time because I was getting up in his face and um, hack and slashing, which we really weren't supposed to do that much. You're supposed to uh, use the chain and attack that um, spot on his forehead. You know, um, in this boss fight, you know, it kind of felt a lot like Monster Hunter because, you know, you have this giant thing, you know, like shooting crap at you and you're like, you know, dodging out the way and leaping and whatever. You know, so this, this boss fight felt kind of like, you know, a lot like Monster Hunter. And at the same time, God of War and Zelda. So, so this game is like a mixture of a bunch of, you know, badass, you know, action, you know, and adventure games. It's, it's pretty awesome. So I can see, um, although I'm doing all this slashing, 
it, it affects him, but it's not actually taking away much of his health. It just makes him, uh, you know, like, you know, flinch and things of that nature. And I was supposed to attack his arm there, but like I said, at this time, I didn't know exactly what I was supposed to be doing. And see right here, uh, what I, I was kind of uh, doing the wrong thing, because I'm actually supposed to leave that chain in there for uh, a long time and charge it up and continue pulling on it, so it does more damage. But what I was doing was pulling on it for like two seconds. And this little time I pull up that menu, I keep on pressing the E key on accident, because the E key is what I have the uh, plus button assigned to, and I just weave the shit out of that. But uh, yeah, like I was saying, I was supposed to uh, charge up the chain and then rip it out. That way it would have done a lot more damage. So this video would have been a lot shorter, <laughs> you know, um, if I knew what I was doing. That's why this video is 20 minutes long. Because, you know, for a, a lot of parts in this game, I didn't exactly know what I was doing or spending too much time on enemies. That was a really slow moving attack. So there should be uh, another cut coming up here right now, yeah. So um, as you can see, it's a uh, the it's pretty. This is just the first boss fight, and it's like pretty damn epic. I was re I was really enjoying it. This is a pretty damn good game, and um, you know, definitely after I'm done with this commentary, I'm gonna sink some more hours into it. Normally, I I'll be going to bed right now, but I want to play this damn game. <laughs> But yeah, that's pretty much um, all I wanted to say. If you guys are interested in, uh, you know, more, um, you know, gameplay, what I, what I might do is I'll actually uh, record some gameplay and upload it to my. Uh... No, I might upload to this account, but I'm thinking I'm gonna have my Shokyo Zone channel as my, you know, uh, gameplay channel, gameplay for me. You know, but you know, I might I might go ahead and uh, just upload to this channel or whatever. And uh, also, somebody on my Facebook page asked me to live stream this on um, on Twitch TV. I will definitely do that tomorrow night. So if you guys don't know my Twitch TV, just go to twitchtv.com/slash um, Shokyo. I'm pretty sure it's Shokyo. It's either Shokyo or Shokyo TV, either one. And uh, make sure you know you follow my page or whatever, so that way whenever I start streaming, you guys are alerted and you can come in there and. Um, you know, come in there and watch me. Also, follow me on Facebook and Twitter because if you want to know what's going on, you know, what's going up, I said what's going up, uh, you know, what, what's happening, um, you know, just, you know, on Twitter, you know, I'll post or whatever, hey, I'm about to start streaming, guys, I'll start streaming in an hour or whatever. You know, so make sure you add me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter, and I will definitely be streaming some of this game um, tomorrow night. And I'm going to see, um, you know, what other games I can get my hands on. You know, I'm trying to see if um, I'm trying to see if I could go out and invest in a DUD drive that will play um, you know play uh, my retail Wii games because yes this Pandora's tower you know was downloaded but you know you really can't blame me you know it's not out in America it's only out in Europe and Japan so you know really can't blame me for that but yeah I'm going to be playing my uh, retail Wii games because you know I'm not just gonna pirate like that you know going to you know actually use retail copies of games you know to play on the simulator and i encourage a lot of you to do the same although i know that's pretty much void words because you're like fuck that you know free games <laughs> you're going to head over to pirate bay right now and just start downloading like everything so yeah guys um you know this is just another really good reason to invest in a gaming pc you know, and I, I, I'm sorry, I know a lot of you don't want to hear that. I know it sounds fanboyish or whatever, but, you know, it's just the truth. You know, when you get, when you invest in a powerful PC, you are investing in, you know, multiple different things. You know, you're getting a good, um, you know, video editing and rendering machine. You're getting a gaming machine, and you're also getting an emulating machine. So, I mean, getting a game PC is just a win, 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 win situation. There's just no downside in investing in a game PC, really. So, as, uh, as you can see, I finally uh, finally killed him. And uh, the video's about to end right here because, you know, no, it's already 20 minutes long, whatever. So, first impressions, this game is, is pretty damn good. Like I said, solid 8.3 out of 10. 
hopefully this game gets brought over to the states like the last story in xenoblade but i'll see you guys later thanks for watching